Hello everybody, my name is King Sticks. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down kiting jungle monster camps as both range and melee, explaining the importance and also explaining how it works and why it works. We're going to be starting out with the range jungler Twitch. It's easier to understand how important kiting is on a range champion and especially on Twitch since he doesn't have any built-in sustain in the jungle. If you've been paying attention thus far, this is a lot of what I see on lower elo junglers or people new to the jungle. They'll attack a camp and essentially stand still. They might move around a little bit out of habit or because they think it's the right thing to do, but they are not moving around effectively. I'm just standing still in this video to illustrate how much damage you take and why. There's two main reasons why you should be kiting jungle camps. The first and foremost is to keep you as healthy and high HP as possible in your jungle. If you're not kiting, you'll be very low health. You'll be highly susceptible to getting counter jungled. You won't have the same options for taking neutral objectives like scuttle crabs or dragons. And it will also be very difficult for you to gank early game since you'll be half HP or less, which will put you at constant threat of dying. The second goal is to get to your next camp even faster. Every single one of your spells in League of Legends has a cooldown. It is the same concept with your auto attack. The cooldown of each and every one of your auto attacks is dictated by your attack speed. When comparing the average champion's attack speed to slower attacking camps like red buff and blue buff, the average champion has a higher attack speed. Therefore, by moving back in between auto attacks, even as a melee champion, you will inevitably cancel several of that monster's auto attacks. That may not seem like a lot, but taking 100 or 200 less damage per camp or per a couple of camps really does add up. The second thing you're going to be taking advantage of when it comes to kiting monster camps is the movement speed advantage. On almost every single monster camp, you will be faster than the monsters except for the chicken and wolf camp. But no need to fear, you can still make use of this third tip for kiting monster camps to take advantage of monster camps like raptors and wolves that are naturally moving faster than you and you can't just outrun and move them around. And that is monster juggling, is to block their pathing with other monsters in that particular camp. Now let's redo the Twitch jungle clear, looking at these three aspects of higher attack speed, higher movement speed in general, and the ability to monster juggle. And as a bonus tip, as a range champion, if you're having to do the camp all by yourself, you want to start out at the tip of the monster's attack range, attack it, and then immediately move away. That way you can build up some free distance and start putting your health regen to use to overall minimize the amount of damage you take in the clear as a whole. Against the slower camps like red buff and blue buff, you can simply kite it by moving it around without resetting it. You're going to need to keep track of that little bar above its health. It'll turn yellow when it's medium and you'll keep seeing it get smaller and smaller towards red. Once it gets down to one bar of red, you really don't want to drag it out any farther because you're risking it resetting. For me, I'm very experienced with it and I know exactly how far I can push the camp before it will reset. That's just something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. These red dots symbolize how far you can pull out the red buff in terms of its hitbox. So wherever that red dot is, that's how far you can pull out the red buff's hitbox before its patient bar starts to wear down and it will eventually reset. You can pull it past these red markers, assuming its patient bar isn't already completely depleted. That way you can get to your next camp faster. So on the south side, you can see I can actually drag it into the bush and kill it there if I don't want the enemy jungler to see me. On the east side, I can drag it all the way into the end of the bush and hold it there if I so chose. And on the north side for kiting up, that red dot symbolizes how far I can yank it out there before I have to turn around so I don't reset it. It's best not to smite on your first camp since smite gets stronger each level and will heal you more. So even though I'm not getting a leash here, I'm just going to kite towards my next camp, which is my golems, pulling my red buff past its patient area since I know I can kill it before it resets. When fighting the golems, it's important that you know that the small golem has nearly a fourth the damage of the big one. Not only that, but the small one and the even smaller ones are faster than the big one which will allow you to juggle or herd, if you will, the small and medium golems in front of the big ones, avoiding the vast majority of the incoming damage. To do this, start out by attacking the large golem while at the same time being closer to the medium one. That way the medium one gets off the first hit 
and gets in the way of the big one. You are then going to move left into the wall using the wall in the medium golem to block the large one. Something important to keep in mind is in camps with multiple monsters, certain monsters will reset before others. So in this case, if I kite to the left, the bigger one will reset faster than the smaller one, meaning I can pull the smaller one out farther before it will reset rather than the big one. And if I were to kite it to the right, the smaller one would reset first. It's all based on their starting position, as you can see here. Notice how the big golem gets blocked every time the medium one goes to attack me and it can't quite get to me. If you notice, the big one doesn't actually get a chance to hit me a single time and I remain really close to 100% HP with getting no leash on my red buff, doing golems on Twitch jungle, and only using one refillable potion. Only one of the medium golems has gotten consistent hits on me. Meanwhile, the other golems are scrambling to try to get around it to hit me. This juggling slash herding method is useful in any camp that has multiple monsters, and it's most valuable when doing golems since the big golem in particular has outrageous damage, doing more damage than red buff or blue buff itself. When it comes to kiting scuttle crab, it's really easy since it has really low base movement speed, and obviously it's not going to fight back. The main thing you want to keep in mind when kiting it is pushing it towards your safest point or your next gank. So let's say your mid laner is doing good, then you want to push it towards your mid so he can help you. Or if your mid laner is falling behind and getting shoved in, you probably would want to push it towards your bot lane. When it comes to the raptor camp, all of them are faster than you and the big raptor has range attacks. The small raptors are all melee with very short attack range, so you're going to be juggling them to keep the smallest amount of them attacking you as possible having them fumble across each other trying to get to you. Something to also keep in mind is if you stand still, the little raptor actually does more damage to you than the big one. Yes, believe it or not, the attack damages of the big raptor and the small ones are very similar, except the small raptor has much more attack speed. So if you decide to stand still while clearing raptors, you will be taking exponentially more damage since it will allow all the little ones to surround you and munch on you very fast, very quickly, since they won't have to be fighting to get to you. Kiting the wolf camp is very similar to the raptor camp. You want to juggle them into each other, and you also want to kill the small ones first to get rid of most of the damage. If you're playing an insane clear champion like Kane, where you can wipe out all the small ones with just two Qs, it's fine to just kill the big one first. However, if you are playing a jungler who does primarily single target damage, you're going to want to kill the small raptors and the small wolves first before finishing off the big one. You're going to take blue the same exact way you take red, taking minimal attacks in general and just walking away and shooting, walking away and shooting. If you're melee, it's the same thing. Whenever the monster camp is getting low on HP, feel free to kite towards the next area you want to go to to save time. There's no reason to stand still. This might not seem like much, but if you do this correctly with all six of your jungle camps, you can end up saving yourself around 10 seconds of time where you can be deeper on the map, setting up a gank or preventing your teammate from dying. Blue buff is easier to take than red buff since blue buff is the slowest moving monster camp. In terms of chasing you, you really shouldn't be taking too much damage from it at all. Here I'm pretending I have a top laner who has priority, so I'm keeping my scuttle crab top lane away from the mid lane bushes, that way the enemy jungler can't steal it and I don't have to worry about the mid laner roaming on me. Gromp is pretty fast and has range attacks, so you're not going to be canceling too many of its auto attacks, but like you see here, I am dragging it out far enough to where it is having to chase me instead of hitting me, probably saving myself around 100 or so HP, but it does add up. Think about it, I'm playing Twitch jungle, got no leashes, did all the camps and I'm full HP pretty much. As a melee character, if you do have impactful abilities that either shield, heal, or do lots of damage on Gromp, you will be attacking it, moving away, attacking it, moving away, and trying to play around your cooldowns. I'm going to leave you guys with a few bonus tips. You never, ever, ever want to get the Hunter's Potion. It is a waste of gold. Even if your champion desperately needs health and mana, it's not worth the purchase because if you're clearing your camps properly, leveling up the right spells, and kiting the camps, you will not need that extra HP it gives, and it's a massive gold waste that you could be using on items which are very important in the early game. Spending that gold on a hunter's potion instead of real items will hurt your stats tremendously and stop you from being able to get those kills or ganks off that you should have been able to get off. For those of you who are in lower elo, I see you keep taking a hunter's machete even when you're playing a champion that can take full advantage of hunter's talisman. If you're wondering what the difference is, hunter's machete gives you a slightly faster clear on single monster camps. Hunter's talisman, on the other hand, if you have an AoE ability, 
lets you clear AoE camps much, much faster, and it allows you to get back so much health off of monster camps that have multiple monsters. This is more important than ever since Golem is the most important monster camp right now. It gives the most experience, and it allows you to hit level 3. With just doing one monster camp, plus Golems, plus another monster's camp, you can hit level 3. You can't do that with anything else. If you get two blue buffs and a red buff, you're still level 2. If you get two red buffs and wolves, you're still level 2. But if you get a monster camp, plus Golems, plus a monster camp you will be level three the two main times you want to take hunter's machete is if your champion has a massive attack speed steroids like master yi or Zhao, or two if you don't plan on doing any aoe camps on your first clear and you're just trying to cheese game and that is going to wrap up this video i hope these tips help you out and help expose some light on why it is important to kite jungle camps and the benefits you get from it if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel don't forget to like comment and subscribe it really does help out a lot my name is king sticks thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys next time Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep.